giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Before we get to the FRC Top 25, um, Justin and Tyler, um, I know there were a lot of heat this weekend over a rule clarification on G20 and the plethora of yellow and red cards given out this past weekend. So both of you kind of um, were in it. Um, so G20, for those that don't know, is about the initiating deliberate or damaging contact with an opponent robot or inside their vertical extension of its frame perimeter. So as I said, Justin, you were at SB PLI 2, um, and Tyler, you were in um, Las Vegas. Yeah. So um, if you guys don't mind, um, Justin, with you first, kind of um, give us your take because um, for myself watching, it was just like watching SBL, um, watching you guys in Long Island specifically was just like, you know, it was just like felt like every match, you know, like there was something and just take forever for scores to come out. And then, of course, it was another yellow card. And um, but yeah, so I'd love to hear. Justin, you can start. Yeah, um, and if you guys don't know, I'm on Team 3015 uh, Range Robotics. We did compete at Long Island number two. And we kind of knew something was up when they uh, announced over the loudspeaker a few times uh, Friday afternoon um, that they were having a mandatory driver's meeting at 6.30 on the field. So we are like, all right. So we kind of knew something was up. And they, they didn't really talk too much about it except just to kind of the referee just review G20 kind of very carefully with the teams and ask all teams to review it. Um, we had no expectations that it was going to, or that was Thursday night, sorry. We had no expectations that it was going to be um, called the way that it was. Uh, Frank, obviously, in the, the his blog today, um, apologized for kind of the pendulum swinging too far in the other direction. They obviously wanted to protect some teams that were um, seeing a lot of damage through from defensive robots, and I understand their intent. Um, but for uh, maybe not us so much, but a lot of teams at our event, it really ruined their experience. Um, it was to the point, and I made the point to you guys before we got on the air here, that it was a lot like the NFL where, you know, in a game where there's a lot of referee impact throwing flags, it's tough to get excited about big plays because you're just like waiting for the flag. And that's what it was like after every match. We're just waiting for a card, waiting for a card, waiting for a card. And even in matches where cards didn't come, um, there was still a five-minute deliberation between the referees where you're just like, you know, your anxiety and stress is through the roof. You know, did we get a red card? Did we get a yellow card? So it was just frustrating. Um, I guess it's a little bit of a consolation prize to see Frank's apology, but for teams that spent 5,000 plus hours at the event, the apology doesn't mean too much. Um, so it was a little bit frustrating. I'm glad they did kind of send out another directive um, before eliminations to kind of tone it back a little bit, but there was a, a an alliance. I'm not saying I, I, I didn't watch the matches that closely. I'm not saying that it wasn't deserved, but there was an alliance that got eliminated in the quarterfinals at Long Island number two with back-to-back -back red cards. Um, so that's just, it's a frustrating um, experience for, for us and those teams. And in the future, we would just like, you know, the game design committee to maybe study the game and try to figure out a little more how the game might be played instead of having to make those changes, you know, week five, late in the season, but also mid-event. Um, Tower, what did you see in Las Vegas? Well, I'll, I'll tell you about what I saw in Las Vegas, but here, real well, let me go through that first, and then let me go through the problem I have with something. And I, I know this has been pointed out a couple times, but uh, mm -hmm. so in Las Vegas, actually, we saw a little bit different story, I think. Uh, in Las Vegas, uh, there was, I think, three G20 cards given out. Um, so it wasn't actually that much of a detriment or anything like that. Uh, you know, I started hearing about, of course, SPBLI2. Uh, Salt Lake City, I heard, had a ton of uh, cards given out. Uh, and so did Buckeye. Coffee? Yeah. Yeah. So did Buckeye, right? Mm -hmm. um, yep. And it it was something that was quite interesting. So Frank Merritt was actually at Las Vegas the entire weekend. Uh, so I had uh, some opportunities to talk to him. Uh, and, and in regards to this in general, I know that was something that was a big concern of his. Uh, he was on the phone quite a bit. I don't, I don't know exactly with whom or anything like that. Um, but I, I would assume Aiden on uh, trying to figure out some of these things. Uh, Aiden, Aiden, who's the head referee for, for FRC. Uh, and, you know, I, definitely you could see that he was concerned in regards to it, kind of just the emotion and feeling coming from him. And, of course, in the blog post that you saw uh, that, you know, he takes that very seriously. And the one thing, here's the thing I don't get that I think is very frustrating, is that this was not made as an update or anything, right? This was like a new directive sent in referee during the referee call. Like, this, this is how the, the update to the G20 came out. It's like, oh, yeah. uh, you know, we're just going to tell the referees in a call and not tell any of the teams that this change is being made. So I'm not sure what led to that decision. And if it was something where it's like, oh, we don't think it's going to impact that much, therefore teams don't immediately need to know or what goes on. But then on uh, Saturday around uh, in the morning, there was this uh, this this 
email list chain thing that was sent to referees, the head referees that like talked about the updates and how it should be called for Saturday eliminations and beyond. And like mm-hmm. to me, that just seems so strange that it's just like they, they shifted one way without telling, any, telling anybody. And then they shifted back without really telling anybody. Wow. And, and Justin, you mentioned there was a driver meeting that went over, maybe went over some of that, but I mean, I didn't hear anything about that in Las Vegas when I was there. And I think the mm-hmm. referee personally, and this is very subjective, right? But I think the referee called it quite well uh, at Las Vegas and it didn't really seem to hinder or impact too much of the play at Las Vegas, but obviously many other regionals were impacted by this and, uh, I'm glad it's being, you know, uh, I guess righted. I don't know if that's the right word, but maybe corrected to what it should be. Uh, it seems mm-hmm. like a lot of people are happy with that correction uh, in the team update for it. So, I mean, it's good that they figure that part out. It's just, it's one of those where I'm not, I'm just confused. Like, why did they do this without telling people? And uh, yeah, that just like, makes sense. I mean, yeah. it's like, well, how, how best to disseminate information to all your head refs? You would say, well, yeah, email, but in the in the busyness of a, a regional or district weekend, like you can't bank on people like seeing that or whatever. So yeah, I think that's interesting, Tyler. You know, why wasn't it released more publicly? And in that way, there's more buzz about it, and then it can be addressed. And Anthony um, in the chat had mentioned that finals match three at North Bay this weekend was decided with the G20 yellow card, which is just not you know it's like the tie all over again from a couple of years ago. You know, at, at, on Einstein so. Um, yeah, it's just really unfortunate, but, you know, Frank, Frank takes care of it. And, you know, it's, it, it's hard after all this has happened, you know, like Justin said, when, when you're paying so much money, it's hard after the fact, but, uh, hopefully we, we see it and hopefully it doesn't swing too far back the other way, you know? So, but yeah. So. Justin, something just to ask you as it's being active mm-hmm. on a team, and I, I know your team is very offensive based, right? But mm-hmm. when you look at, uh, you know, you might be competing with people who are who are defensive robot. You guys are, are on high city alliances. Uh, you know, did did that impact kind of some of the strategy in regards to how you play the elimination tournament, especially at SPBLI too, where there's so many cards, or or is it just kind of business as usual? Well, we you know we really thought about limiting drastically the amount of defense we were asking our alliance partners um to make because it just it wasn't worth the risk at that point which i think is what the what the Mm. game design committee and frank were trying to do right they were trying to create a a little bit of a disincentive to play such hard and aggressive defense that we were seeing but the thing that killed us the most not just us like killed the event is that i saw a lot of offensive teams getting carded for g20 um when they were being defended against uh, by defensive teams because you know it was it was bumper to bumper contact and you know teams yeah. are in a pushing match and then all of a sudden the robots would kind of pop apart and one robot would drive on the other robot you know completely incidentally and drive off and if there was any damaging contact it was um it was a, a, a yellow card or in some instances a red card against teams that were trying to play offense so that was just the most frustrating part um, about it for us um, you know there was a lot of teams that felt impacted by it. So it wasn't just kind of our thing, but I like Mike said, I'm glad that they kind of, you know, Frank recognizes the issue and hopefully um, going forward, they can deal with not only this issue, but you know, in future games, as instances like this arise, maybe they can do a little bit better job of not only informing head refs, but also teams about, you know, where the, where the game is heading, um, what their thought process is. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, game updates come out on what Tuesdays or something. So yeah. I mean, it's kind yeah. of, you can't really release an update because then you're going to hear heat that, you know, it was not on a Tuesday. But yeah, maybe like a, like a half update or something, you know, or, or something like that. But you're right. Like, it's just so hard to see it called on offensive teams that are just trying to play the game and trying yeah. to get to their scoring zones, you know. And, you know, you just, you can't, you can't just sit there, you know. So that's just really, and you're right. Like, things just happen or, or whatever. But And I remember talking about this last year, and I'll say it again. FRC desperately needs the VEX rule that if you are playing offense in most instances, you will be given the benefit of the doubt Mm -hmm. in instance, you know, in, in tough calls with a defensive robot that would solve so many problems and would have absolutely solved a lot of the problems that we saw um, this weekend, at least at Long Island, because it was, it was really frustrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A couple of our comments from chat. Uh, Army boy, 941 said uh, Silicon Valley regional, uh, got fortunate since it looked like the refs talked after the fifth qual match about the update. Only one yellow card was handed out. Uh, so interesting there. Uh, and then a couple others as well, too. 
that uh, Eric4188 uh, said Final Smash 3 at uh, PCH was also won on 2G20 fouls, resulting in a red card. Uh, yeah. Uh, Necro Creature says that Finn Maryville didn't see a lot of cards. Uh, I was playing defense the entire competition and didn't see any, luckily. Um, so, you know, interesting to see how just that change got made to the referees, right? It was dictated to the referees to call a different way and how inconsistent it clearly was uh, off of that as well. So, you know, I think we can beat this this horse to death on things, but I, I think the moral of the story, and hopefully that first learns, I think as Justin said, right, like the, this needs to be clearly communicated to the teams. It can't just be done in a call. Yeah. But, I mean, and I saw, I think it was Alan Gregory that I saw online that said, uh, then in regards to he's not asking for full transparency, you just want more clear transparency on things. Mm-hmm. Uh, in regards to that, I don't know if that was the exact words, but I think that was the intent of what I read on there. So, uh, yeah, and, and hopefully, you know, it's, it's a lesson learned, and it sucks for that week, and it sucks for the teams that have to deal with it, and all we can do is move on and hopefully, uh, you know, first learns from this experience, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's hard. I mean, you have – what, 20 plus events I mean, you know, each weekend, yeah. you know, so it's just, it's, it's hard to, to keep that manageable, especially, you know, with volunteers and, and all that. So tell us, we do the FRC top 25 is ridiculous <laughs> to try to keep that manageable. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. For sure. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.